All right, hey, good morning, friends. It's Friday morning. It's about 8.30 here this morning at the house, and it is a little bit breezy this morning, and the birds are going nuts, so I thought I'd put in my microphone. Hopefully, it knocks down a little bit of the uh, outside noise, but we'll see how it goes. Hopefully, it's not too distracting for you. I hope you're doing well on this Friday morning. And uh, this morning, we are still in 1 Corinthians. I know, shocker, right? 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 4. And I particularly want to jump down here and I want to focus in on, I believe it's verse 16. Uh, <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 4, 16, Paul says, Therefore I exhort you to be imitators of me. Now this morning I just want to give you a, a quick thought on, on simple faith. On simple faith, and particularly the simple practice of our faith. My boys have been... Uh, with the online schooling thing. Isaac was kind of into it a little bit before that, but with the online schooling thing, obviously they're getting a lot of videos and stuff like that. And they do these uh, guided draws. I don't know if you've seen those. Sometimes they're even on like the Disney Channel and stuff like that where they'll teach you how to draw Pluto or Mickey or things like that. Well, they've been drawing all these Star Wars characters. I think the other day they drew a Stormtrooper. It's actually pretty impressive. Um, and uh, far better than I can do. I can't even draw stick figures. So, but they're able to actually, my, you know, eight-year-old kid and my six-year-old kid can, can draw these, you know, these, these pictures. And there's, there's really a twofold beauty in that. One is first that the artists that are leading those things, that they're able to draw. Like I told you, I, some of you can draw. That's fantastic. Sheila actually showed me some artwork from one of the, one of the children at our, at our church that's, that's in a contest right now. And I was shocked. (laughs) And how good it was! It's amazing what artists can do with with a couple couple utensils and, and paper and pen and stuff. But secondly, it's it's even more amazing not only when they can do it themselves, like you know, draw a stormtrooper or Goofy or Pluto or whatever else, but that they can help others do it. Right? Um, the others can imitate them in their ability to do the same thing. Uh, several years ago, I was kind of pondering over why Chris Tomlin was. Chris Tomlin is so uh, successful in the church. Chris Tomlin, I don't know if you know who he is, but he's kind of like the modern day Fanny Crosby. My guess is if you don't know who Chris Tomlin is, you probably know who Fanny Crosby is, but literally written hundreds of songs. Fanny Crosby is a hymn writer um, and very, very commonly used in churches all across the world. He's written songs like How Great Is Our God, um, Good, Good Father, You're a Good, Good Father, It's Who You Are, um, Love Ran Red, at the cross where your love ran red and your sin washed white um blessed blessed be the name of the lord uh, amazing grace my chains are gone so so many songs that that we have particularly sung in our church and when i'm at other churches or at big events these are or at you know multi-church events these are songs that i hear and again you know i'm thinking why was what is it about chris tomlin that makes him so much more successful than so many other artists because there's a lot of Christian artists out there and they're really good. They're really good at what they do. But what is it that makes him so um, so successful? And this might not be something that you don't know if you haven't led music or if you're not a musician, but as a worship leader, one of the things I figured out real quickly is that Chris Tomlin's songs, I can do. Uh, he has written them in such a way that someone who is a normal everyday run of the muck guitar player that can you know play seven chords which is most guitar players at church or piano players uh they can they can do these songs they can emulate them that's the beauty of the hymn book is that you open up the hymn book and if you have a a reasonable knowledge of you know musicianship playing at a piano you can play hymns they're straightforward and a lot of music these days, it's just so complex that you're like, man, that's a great song. But if I was to try to do that in a, in a church service or publicly, it would be embarrassing. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be beneficial for anybody, not me or the people that we're listening in. So there's a beauty, not only in his ability to create music, but he's creating music in such a way that others can imitate him. Others can participate with him. And so 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 4, 16 says, I want you to be imitators of me as I am an imitator of Christ. Actually, it doesn't say that. Be imitators of me, but it, actually, if you skip over to chapter 10, verse 1, he says, be imitators of me as I am an imitator 
as a follower of Christ. And so Paul, we talked about yesterday, Paul sees himself as the spiritual father. And the Corinthian church are his spiritual children. And he, he wants the children to participate with him in this life of faith. Um, and if, he's, if people, one of the just general rules, simple things that I'm illustrating to you right now is that if you, if you want to, other people to emulate you, you have to live a life that's emulatable. You have to live a life that's duplicatable. First Corinthians, um, just turning back uh, a chapter, First Corinthians, uh, is it? Yeah, chapter two, uh, one through five. This is how he came to the Corinthian church. It says, "When I came to you, brethren, I did not come with superiority of speech or wisdom, proclaiming to you the testimony of God." He said, "I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified with and Him crucified." I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom, but simply in the demonstration of the Spirit and of power, so that your faith would not rest on the wisdom of men, but on the power of God. In other words, Paul, Paul doesn't come in order to try to do something that people will be in awe of and say, wow, Paul, that's great. Only you can do it that way. He came to do something that he knew that the Corinthian church, when they grabbed a hold of the message, that they could participate in well, as well. Paul came in really the beauty of simplicity. He, can't, he didn't come to be the feature presentation. He came to do things in such a way that he could invite others into sharing it with them. Uh, so where does this hit for Brian? I'll tell you where it hits for Brian, just as a practical sense, and, and hopefully I'm gonna challenge you to have some, some uh, applications yourself. We're doing a, some house projects lately, as I'm sure several of you guys have. Um, my timeline's a little off of what I originally expected, but we're getting them done. And uh, I've, when it comes to house projects, I tend to be a very compulsive and a slight perfectionist. <laughs> um, and I really, I really get into projects and I want them to be perfect. Problem with that is I got an eight-year-old son who's constantly asking to participate and he's not getting as much participation as he should have. And I give him some jobs here and there, and he's doing stuff, and he's actually very helpful. But I'm worried, you know, Brian goes, oh, well, if I let him do this, it's not going to be good enough. And just sitting there thinking about that, going, man, I need to, not necessarily with these projects, but I need to have projects that my son can participate in, especially my six-year-old. He needs to, you know, he needs to get working. But, um, and so I've been thinking about you know, the next thing to do at the house, a couple other things, and how I can do them in such a way that my boys get to participate, to, to make them simple, to give them jobs within it. My, my friend Doug Beasley down, down in Salem, uh, we were talking about, you know, children helping us with projects and things around the house a couple of years ago. He said, well, Brian, it only takes a little longer with help. And I've never forgotten that. I think that's so true. Uh, but how important is it for my son to learn how to emulate, how to imitate how to duplicate and if i am constantly only doing things <clears throat> that i won't invite him into because it's too complex or it's too hard I, i've missed the mark and so what does that mean practically for us you know um what it means practically for us is that we have to participate in a simple faith you know and so i just want to encourage you i just want to encourage you today you know um, do something simple in, in christ's name for for somebody else that somebody else can say I can do that. I can do that. You know, there's, there's so much beauty in a simple phone call and saying, when you hang up the phone, say, hey, uh, I checked on you. Why don't you check on somebody else, right? Or, or sharing a letter and, and encouraging them to pass the letter on or sharing a gift. Sometimes you go through the drive through and you pay for someone who's behind you, you know? Uh, encourage them to share the gift to give a word of encouragement and encourage somebody else to do it, to encourage other people. Don't just do it and then walk away, but to encourage people to participate with us. And as we, as we look at one another and we're inspired by one another, uh, we really do become the body of Christ. Uh, so the simple word today, do something simple and encourage someone else to join with you. 
Um, I suppose that's it. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Friday. I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. And uh, let me pray for you. Lord Jesus, we are, we are grateful for people that have taught us how to walk with you. And some things are complex and some things are simple. Lord, we know that uh, we're all at different levels and different, in different places in this journey. Uh, but we ask that as we walk, that we would not walk, as, as Paul said, Lord, that we wouldn't walk in superiority of speech or great wisdom, but that we would walk in simply the demonstration of the Spirit's power as we proclaim Christ and Christ crucified. And so I just challenge us to do something of value in your kingdom today. Lord, that's simple, that's encouraging, uh, that someone else can share in with us. Lord, that uh, we would be a people that would help others to pay it forward. That's what we do to others. Others can do for one another. Uh, So we just thank you for the word today. We ask that you would encourage us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Love you. Take care.